Hello, today's video. If you're coming to Costa Rica, please don't do the following things. So please, I thought I'd do this video, so hopefully you watch this before you come down. And these series of don'ts will either save you money, save your time, um, help you out in some way or other. So here we go, let's, let's get into it. You should definitely rent a car, um, get out, travel around the country, see some nice things. But please don't rent those tiny, normal saloon cars. Get a small SUV. And not necessarily because you're going, going to be going off-road, but there are loads of potholes in this country and when you're parking, you're always parking on a verge and going up. And so, so really you need ground clearance and you need good sized tires. There's little tires on the, on the cheapest renter cars. They blow out on the slightest thing, slightest little pothole. And you do not want to be on the side of the road trying to change a tire. So that would be my number one don't. Please don't pay for everything in dollars. The currency of the country is the Colón. And the name comes from Christopher Colon, which is another name for Christopher Columbus. So everything is based in the Colon, even though they present it to you in dollars. The big ticket items like your hotel, renting a car, will be in dollars. Pretty much everything else where you can, try to pay in Colonis, because if you pay in dollars, the exchange rate will be in their favor. And it might be massively in their favor. I mean, the exchange rate when I'm doing this video is about six. 10, 6, 15. Some of them are doing the exchange rate at 500, so you, you, you're losing 20% by paying in dollars. So I'd always have colonnades. Now, please don't change your money in the airport. It's a complete and utter ripoff. Pretty much, when, if you go into any, any bank, they've all got very similar rates, the normal banks. And that's your, the best place to change US dollar notes into colonnades. The, the other alternative is, is to draw money out on your credit card. I would always select colonnades. So then it comes up on your credit card in colonnades and then whatever your credit card company at home does an exchange rate, that's, that's generally the way to go. Don't try to see too much in one trip. When, when you're planning a your trip, you've got a map of Costa Rica and it looks like from one place to the next, it's about an inch. It seems that every trip takes four hours here. You know, the roads are not the best. They're sort of windy little country roads and pop holy and, and then you want to stop off and see things on the way. So travel between one destination and the next always takes longer than you're planning. So if your trip is bum 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 bum, you're not really stopping to smell the roses and enjoy enjoy the place. I would say spend at least two nights in every destination and if it's one you think you're gonna love, spend, spend three nights. And then also you're not under stress to be getting to your destination because Costa Rican roads, you just got to take your time and not rush and not speed because you know, around the next bend there are going to be cows on the road or a you know, big old pothole we need to swerve around. There are so many amazing things to see in this country, but maybe just in your first trip down here, plan to see a few things and then think, well, you're going to be coming back in a year because everybody falls in love with it and everybody comes back. Uh, don't be fooled when you go into restaurants with their menu and, and, their, and their bills. Um, generally, whatever you see on the menu, uh, they're gonna add 13% sales tax and a 10% tip. And that 10% tip by law goes to the servers, it's not for the restaurant. So whatever, you, whatever price you see on the menu, you know that there's going to be a 23% added to that when, when, you, when you get your check. If you see it itemized, which it has to be by law, they'll say 13% sales tax, fair enough. And then they won't say, they'll say ta service tax or something like that. They'll, they'll try to get the word tax into it, so you think it's just a tax, rather than the government enforced 10% obligatory tip that goes to the staff. So people tend to be, they see the amount on the menu, comes to them with an extra 20, 23% added on, and then they'll give another 20% tip. So then your budget goes, goes over the top. Leave whatever tip you feel comfortable with. Uh, a normal Costa Rican going to a restaurant, and then they'll probably leave a few coins or a dollar or two extra. And that's what the servers are normally expecting. <laughs> 
Don't come without WhatsApp downloaded onto your phone. Everybody uses WhatsApp as their primary means of communication. But no Costa Rican is ever going to be sending you a text or calling your North American number. Well, if, if you don't know, WhatsApp is what the rest of the world uses apart from North America to communicate and it's a, a free app. So for example, if you're waiting on the side of the road for your driver and he's late, which they most they usually are, if you have his WhatsApp number, say, hey, where you up? Where are you? And he says, oh, I'm 20 minutes away. Then you can go and get a cup of coffee and you know he's on his way and you're absolutely fine. If you're relying on emails or whatever, he will not be communicating with you and you'll just be standing there on the side of the road. Absolutely, it is the number one way of, of communicating. So I really encourage you to download that. Don't buy property on your first trip down here. And that might seem strange coming from me, but really I think the best way to do it is take your time. People get a little bit of a fever they first come down here because everything is so amazing. And so even if your intention is to buy a property down here, uh, just take your time. Most people come down in, in, in the high season, their first trip, and absolutely fall in love with it. And my recommendation is always just you know, go home, think about it, plan a trip down here in the lower season when everything's much cheaper, the weather's different. Look at it with fresh eyes. And the second time you come down, you'll feel like you're a bit of an expert because you've got connections and you've the people you found on the first trip and you'll be welcome back and, and you'll start to feel part of the community. My interest is you find something that's right for you for the long term. Yeah, the people that buy here, end up becoming my neighbors and my friends. So I really want everybody to make a very good decision as to where and how much they want to spend and if Costa Rica is really for them. And this one's for me as well as, as everybody. Don't fall in love with a Costa Rican girl. Uh, Costa Rican girls are amazing, beautiful, friendly, lovely, hot, passionate, Latino, but they're not the most faithful people in the world. <laughs> I say that with love. Uh, there's this joke, uh, a Costa Rican girl walks into Hallmark a few days before Valentine's Day, says to the guy, do you have a, do you have a card that says, uh, when I met you, I was just an innocent girl. You taught me everything that I know. You fulfill me. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And the Hallmark goes, guy goes, well, yeah, actually I do have a card that says exactly that. And she says, great, give me five of them, please. Now, it's a bit harsh. And I've got good friends that are very happy married to Costa Rican for many, many years, and they've got families and everything works perfectly. But all I'd say is just don't rush into things, just take your time. Don't pay too much in bribes to get out of traffic fines. Now, it's illegal to pay bribes. You could get into trouble, so take care, but Every policeman I've ever met ends up asking for one and it seems to be the normal thing to do. So just go into this with your eyes open. Generally in Costa Rica, you're paying people to either do their job better and faster or do their job worse. And so if you get stopped for speeding or not wearing a seatbelt or anything like that, this is the way it will go. So they'll come up to you and, it, and the guy will be very stern and you know, you've done this wrong, you've done that wrong and that means the fine's going to be $500 or whatever the number is in Colones. Um, we're going to take your car away and you're not going to be able to leave the country until you've gone to court and, and you're going, oh my God, this is, this is really terrible, this is really terrible. And then you float out something like, oh my goodness, you know, is there any way we can settle this now? Can I do an on-the-spot fine? And he'll go, and he'll get his book out. And as soon as he starts to actually write the fine out, then uh, then it's point of no return because he has to fill that in if he's got a half filled out one. But what he'll tend to do is lick his pen and hold his book like that. And then maybe he'll flip over to a blank sheet of paper and to start to write your name down or something. And then at that point, you know you're in the negotiating cycle. And you, often when you're going through it, because you're fairly tense, you're thinking, oh my God, actually I found the, the only honest cop in, in the country. Um, but it's all part of the negotiation. And then he'll say, well, you know, we really shouldn't. Because by the way, the police, if they get caught, they get into a lot of trouble. It's just they never seem to get caught because uh, it's so normal. 
And then he'll say, well, your fine should be $500. If you give me $200, then we'll move on. Now, any Costa Rican that gets stopped, he's paying $10, $5. As a foreigner, $20 is, is a lot. But so you just could then got to go into your charming, self-effacing, um, you know, really, I can't, you know, I've just spent this and I've only got this much and I need to go and get petrol and then get dinner for my wife who's pregnant and you know, whatever it is. Um, and then you just start the negotiation. And then he'll hand his book in and like with his fingers underneath and then you just sort of slot the, the note into there. And then, uh, then he'll give you your, your passport back and everything and wish you on your, on your way. Take a lot of care with that. You know, it, it's the normal way of what Costa Ricans normally do in a traffic stop. And it'll probably give you your best anecdote of your whole trip. Uh, but just go into it with your eyes open. Don't come to Costa Rica without planning your internet connection. I know it sounds horrible, you're here to enjoy the beaches and the, and the jungles and things, but really having a consistent internet connection is going to make your life so much easier. People that come down here and either rely on hotel Wi-Fi or they're paying by the hour for internet connection so they only have it connected for a few minutes a day or whatever. Every interaction you have, whether you're booking your fishing trip or, or your driver to take you to Mamal Antonio or whatever you're doing, you're going to need that constant interaction. Most North American carriers, they'll do a package where you can come on holiday and, and you're covered in Costa Rica. So that's your easiest one. Second, as long as you've got an unlocked phone, you can buy a Costa Rican chip, probably for $10. You can get a card, you slot it into your phone, and then you're covered for your, your whole period down here. So one way or another, I really recommend you figure that out before you come down here. Don't use Google Maps use Waze, W-A-Z-E. Waze is like an intelligent version of Google Maps that gets feedback in real time from other people on the same road as you ahead of you. So for example, if there's an accident ahead, then it will update your app in real time and calculate a different route for you. It's really amazing. And even if you're on a back road in the middle of the night, in the middle of Costa Rica, and also just really trust Waze. Every time when Waze is telling me to go one way and after 20 years I'm going, no, 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 I know that the other way is better. Sure enough, if I don't follow Waze, something's happened, the road's blocked or the tree in the road or something like that. The back roads here are really back roads. So, you know, you might, if you're finding a shortcut on the map and Waze is sending you a different way, it's almost always for a reason, it could be a really rough road. I trust Waze, um, that's always the way for me to get to my destination as, as quick as possible. Um, so it's just, it just really works very well. So please, if you found any of this useful, uh, please click below, like, subscribe, and get an alert so you get notified when the next one's coming out. And it also gives me a little boost and I know that people are really, you know, interested in what I'm talking about. And, and you know, when I, when I see those extra little beep, 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 beep subscribes and that, it gives me an extra little boost and it you know, makes, makes me feel like it's worthwhile to be spending my time sharing my experiences and trying to help you to have a better time during your stay in Costa Rica.